Up first this evening, the Office of the Director of Public Prosecutions has filed a notice of death penalty in the Supreme Court for the sentencing of Roshane Barnett, who is accused of killing a Clarendon woman and her four children. The notice was served on Mr. Barnett while he appeared before the Home Circuit Court this afternoon. However, details of the application were not disclosed. Our coverage begins with Raquel Porter. Roshane Barnett appeared in court via voluntary bill of indictment, which allows for his case to bypass a parish court hearing. He is currently without an attorney. Legal representation is expected to be settled for the 23-year-old man before his next appearance on July 22. A psychiatric evaluation was also ordered by presiding judge Justice Leighton Pusey. Mr. Barnett is implicated in the killing of 31-year-old Kamisha Wright, 15-year-old Kimanda Smith, 12-year-old Sharali Smith, 5-year-old Raphael Smith, and 23-month-old Kishon Henry Jr. Their bodies, which had chop wounds and the throats slashed, were discovered at the family's house in New Road, Chapleton, in Clarendon, last Tuesday. Mr. Barnett fled to Ulster Spring, Trelawney, where he was later apprehended. Mr. Barnett is a cousin of the victims. Raquel Porter, TVG News. Now, here to give us more information about the notice of death penalty is our legal analyst, Dion Jackson Miller. Dion, welcome. All right, first of all, does this notice mean that Roshane Barnett will be put to death? We've been getting that question since news broke. I can imagine. And I know this is a terrible, terrible case. The entire country has been in shock and in mourning over it. But I do think it's very important to say that we do need to allow the legal process to play itself out. So at this stage, we can't say what is going to happen at the end of the day, whether in fact there will be the death penalty or not. What we can say is that this notice of death penalty by the office of the DPP is a legal requirement and that if the notice is not filed, then there is no prospect of successfully seeking the death penalty. We actually had a 2012 case in the Court of Appeal, Jeffrey Perry. That was another tragic case in which, in which three children were, were slaughtered. In that case, they were 4, 13, and 15 years of age. They were his cousins, in fact, and he stabbed them to death. Um, he was sentenced to death, but when it went to the Court of Appeal, it was acknowledged that the DPP's office had not filed a notice of um, death penalty, and as a result, the Court of Appeal said that effectively took the death penalty off the table. So the appeal is necessary if you plan to do that down the road? The notice is absolutely the, the notice necessary, is necessary if you right. plan to go ahead and ask for the death penalty. So why haven't we seen more calls for the death penalty over the years then if this is just the basic requirement? We have, there, there, there is a whole series of, of, of cases and amendments to laws and so on that have taken place. The last execution in Jamaica was February 1988. After that, Jamaica effectively had a 20-year moratorium in which we didn't have any death penalty and any, any executions taking place. Now, in 2009, Jamaica's parliament had a vote on whether to abolish a death penalty and voted to retain it. But then in 2009 also, the Privy Council ruled in a case called Trimmingham. This was a case in which an accused had killed a farmer in St. Vincent and the Grenadines, had been sentenced to death, had appealed the sentence. And what the court said in Trimmingham was that the death penalty was reserved for what they called cases which were the worst of the worst, the rarest of the rare, the most extreme and the most exceptional. And they said that Trimmingham didn't fall into that category. They said it was a bad case of murder for gain, but that it could not be compared with the cases, most, the worst cases of sadistic killings. So they said you had to have a situation where the person can't be reformed, he's incapable of reform, where the aim of sentencing can only be achieved by the sentence of death. And in that situation, they said it didn't fall into that category. It's an extremely high bar. And I have been in the court of appeal where um, appeals against death sentences were being argued based on Trimmingham. And I remember one of the judges said, so you're saying practically it's almost impossible then to execute someone. And counsel said, well, based on Trimmingham, it is very, very difficult. Okay. Well, um, I know it's odd before the courts right now, but uh, how do you see it playing out? in this case. And, and again, going back to what I said earlier, exactly that point, Herman, we have to allow it to play out. You know, 
the, when they accuse appears on the next occasion on the 22nd of July, he's at that point going to be assigned counsel. So at this point, he doesn't even have a lawyer yet. Counsel will talk to him about the death penalty notice and give advice as to what he should do in those circumstances. The, um, the court has also ordered a psychiatric evaluation. And as well, the defense, his lawyers will get disclosure. So all of that has to happen. And all of that will be taken into consideration depending on what he decides to do, whether he decides to plead guilty or not guilty, we don't know. And then what happens at sentencing. So there's a lot still to come and we have to allow the process to work itself out. Okay, good. Thank you very much. Our legal analyst, Dion Jackson, Miller, breaking it all down for us there.